weird as I did, like, uh, I remembered a few parts from this from watching it, like, 20, or well, however long it was, because the, um, what was the VHS cover? It was something, it was called something else. They come from within, or they came from within, or something like that. Yeah. So, this was David Cronenberg's very first feature-length movie from... 1975, I think. Is that right? Yeah. And you're more 75. The, you're more of the Cronenberg aficionado than me. I always see most of his movies as just weird, fucking like. And this is no different. This is <laughs> no, no different at all. No, it's not. Uh-huh. Like you can totally tell, like how he got. You know that this was the beginning, and then everything else was just they gave him more money, but he was still doing the same thing. <laughs> like this movie. A little bit of backstory about this movie was actually funded by the Canadian government. <laughs> this is so killer. It yeah. was funded by the Canadian government because they were trying to get into, you know, making films. And what would later become like, you know, the big film industry in Canada where everybody like Romero and all those people would go to make cheap films basically started around this time. And the funny thing about it is that after it was made, uh, the film industry was like, nope, <laughs> we don't want to do this shit no more. And they actually, they actually seriously, like, um, they kind of withheld money from a lot of different films, including Cronenberg's uh, next films for a couple years after this film came out. But hmm. oddly enough, it was like, it was like the biggest independent film in Canada. I think it still is or close. All right. Well, I mean, the, um, yeah, the plot of this movie is kind of out there though. I mean, just a little bit like, I guess the, you know, the whole story is a scientist comes up with using parasites to, I think the whole thing was to like help heal. Like if you've got a bad kidney or something like that, the parasite goes in there and repairs it or replaces the kidney or whatever, but things do not go as planned with the little parasites. They don't work out like the scientist thinks they're going to. And, uh, and it all happens in this apartment complex, um, in Montreal, if you will. So <clears throat> yeah, this movie is, uh, also like the, I guess the parasites make the people extremely horny as well and just uncontrollably, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's weird because it's kind of, it's kind of like um, what I don't know what you compare it to, like Night of the Creeps and Slither and movies like that. Except in this one, like rather than it turning, I guess it does turn you into a zombie in a way, but you're just like super sexualized. And I still think that it has one of the best opening scenes in terms of like. Uh, grabbing your attention. Mm-hmm. You remember the opening scene is just like this guy, and you don't know what the hell's going on. It's like this guy and this girl, and they're fighting, and like he pins her down, starts choking her, and you're like, oh, Lord God, like what's he going to do? Rape her or something? Like you have no idea. And then the, the next cut, he's kind of like got a scalpel and opens her up, pours acid on her, and all this stuff. But well, you come to find out that like that was the scientist that was working on the parasites and he's basically trying to like kill them off before they infect other people. Yeah. And they have like a few other really bizarre scenes. There's a scene with like a real fucking old man and like a younger girl. And yeah. And they're kind of making out a little bit. And then there's a scene with uh, two kids that have leashes on and they're treating them like dogs. <laughs> And almost every female that's in this movie, you get to see their tits. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that might good. be a plus for some people. I mean, Lynn Lowry's in it, so, but also like Barbara Steele's in it. I'm like, now that's a hell of a like casting choice for this movie. Yeah, Barbara Steele. Uh, this was in '75, and those Bobbin movies that she did, I'm thinking, was like probably 15 years earlier or something like that. Yeah. 10, yeah, all that years stuff. Earlier. I can't remember what years those come out, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a weird, wacky, 
in a way, like, I don't know if you, it is kind of like a zombie movie almost. It reminds me visually a lot of the, a lot of the camera techniques and the sound and stuff. Of Dawn of the Dead. Like when I was watching it again, I was like, huh? Cause it was around the same time frame and everything. So yeah. visually it kind of looked a lot like Dawn of the Dead. I thought. Yeah, it, it does. Now that you mention, it. I think it's like that industrial style of filmmaking you know, that almost looks like industrial films from the 70s or something. Like, well, those yeah. lower-budget films had that look to them. And it's like Especially people of, like... A lot of the background noise and stuff, I guess, was filmed the same way. Like, I think it's a lot like that in Italian horror movies, too. To where, yeah. like... I, I don't know. I don't know if this is this way in Dawn of the Dead, but, like, it, it definitely reminds me of some of those older movies. Like, every time somebody steps anywhere and anything it's like a fucking high heel or something you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, like it's very, yeah and i don't know what that is but that kind of adds something to it i don't know like the i guess what do they call those the the grip that makes those noises or something like yeah that? that makes the i don't know i guess they're sound effects i guess but yeah yeah I know what you mean like everything's very very like uh on the spot there sounding but also like like, you can pick up all the background noise, but there's also, like, the generic kind of sound effects that go along with it when you put something in. Right. And then there's the the big scene at the end in the swimming pool when all hell breaks loose, and it's just a giant orgy of death, pretty much. I think, you know, re-watching this, and I hadn't watched it since the last time you watched it, which was, God knows, like, 15 years ago or something. But uh, I'm pretty sure that that film inspired, like, uh, society, too. Because there's that scene in society, which is just basically the same thing, except, like, they're all m- melding into each other and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. I'm so at least it inspired, like, had to inspire Night of the Creeps and a couple of those other films like that, and definitely society. So, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. Like, I, I watched it with Sarah. She didn't know what to fuck, uh, you know, what to think of it. Uh, yeah. She was like, "This is kind of stupid," but I kind of enjoyed it. I gotta admit, like, uh, it's very weird, and I enjoy weird. And it is definitely, it's, it's probably, well, definitely one of Cronenberg's most weird, and all of his shit's weird. So I would think, yeah, you should. They, they sell this at Walmart, Uncle Bill. Can you believe that? I have a feeling nobody knows what this is. <laughs> it works at Walmart. They're like, if they knew, like they would probably never sell that movie. Yeah, there's a, uh, there was also, I think this is what first got me hearing about this movie back. Probably God, I was in high school at this time. Uh, there's a documentary that features, I think, the bathtub scene and the swimming pool scene. Oh man, I can't remember the name of it, but it has like a lot of the masters of horror in it. Like Cronenberg and Romero and Carpenter and Toby Hooper and all them are in it. So I think this that was the very first time I'd heard of this movie, and I just remember those particular scenes were featured in that documentary too. So well, there's a couple things you can take away from this movie, like for me. And number one is is that from the very beginning of this movie, you can see that he's somebody that number one knows how to get your attention in a movie. Number two is like not really playing by any of the rules of what was like acceptable at that time. But number three would go on to basically like make every like body horror kind of, that was his thing. And this is the beginning of that. And I don't think he ever really deviated from that until like the two thousands when he got into, you know, history of violence. He did do some, yeah, stuff. some mainstream movies there for a little while weird yeah very weird. i mean he had his promises and uh, <laughs> yeah, all that stuff started in, the, started in the late 90s there and he started making it i don't know if he's i don't think he's still doing that or anything but uh he had a couple of pretty mainstream movies there i don't but, know yeah. what he's doing now i was thinking about that like i don't know the last time i heard of him making a film what it was anyway this is shivers and it's out now everywhere pretty much walmart even has it so i would recommend it it's definitely definitely worth a watch i think i mean right now you can get it for ten dollars on amazon so it's definitely worth ten dollars and they did 
they did do a great job with the transfer on this as well. And there's some Michael Felcher did the special features on it. They have interviews on it, commentary. The commentary would be interesting. I haven't listened to a commentary in years, but that'd be an interesting one to check out for Cronenberg. So.